Germany and France have led European integration since the creation of the EU more than half a century ago. They have very close economic ties, haven't even talked about moving closer. But is this really necessary to unify Europe? For more on this, we welcome Mr. Roland Berger of Roland Berger Strategy Consultants. Mr. Berger, are closer German and French ties really the best way to integrate the EU? I think uh, they are the only way to integrate the European Union. I think uh, Germany and France have always been the driving forces for a united Europe. On the other hand, of course, uh, it's very, very important that the smaller countries of the European Union don't feel kind of a, a Franco-German hegemony because uh, they would hate that. So I think it all depends on the functioning of this relationship and secondly, how to communicate it to the rest of the 25 or 15 other members of the, Euro, the EU or the Eurozone. How do you see this relationship changing? I hope it will not change because I think it will be a mess for the Euro if uh, a new French president would question uh, all the agreements which were found up to now among the Eurozone member states and among the EU member states with the exception of the UK. Uh, so um, I really hope that the future uh, French presidents will uh, stick to the commitments, uh, uh, particular to the commitments for the f fiscal compact, which uh, were agreed upon uh, not only France and Germany, but among uh, the EU members, again with the exception of the United Kingdom. When you look back at the changes in Germany and in Europe over the past 23 years, do you believe the German reunification really lived up to its promises? I would say politically, yes. Uh, because uh, it has brought uh, freedom, democracy, uh, free market economies, not only to uh, the ex-GDR or East Germany, but also uh, to the rest of the uh, ex-Soviet empire, uh, Poland, Romania and uh, other countries. Uh, so I think this is, was the major promise, uh, human rights, freedom, democracy, and, the, and these uh, values are now in place in uh, Central and Eastern Europe and of course in uh, the ex-GDR uh, being part of the uh, Federal Republic of Germany. On the other hand, of course, there are still some uh, uh, bumpy roads to go to achieve the same level of wealth and economic uh, uh, well-being in the eastern part of Germany and uh, more so in ex-members of the Comic-Con. But uh, as we have seen, for instance, during, in, during the last crisis, Poland is doing quite well. So altogether, I think it was a very, very positive um, event. And I think with the help of uh, the Western Europeans and uh, the West Germans, but of course also the Americans, um, the promise essentially was uh, fulfilled. How attractive is the EU for foreign and domestic investment? I think we have to um, expect uh, slower growth uh, in Europe for the next uh, five to seven years. There will be a bumpy road also due, the, due to the uh, sovereign debt crisis and due to the uncertainties around the euro. Uh, so I would not, not expect major investments, for indirect investments in Europe from, let's say, at least from the conventional sources. On the other hand, you can or we all can expect, if you want, uh, a lot of Chinese uh, investment uh, coming to Europe. We just have seen recently the acquisition of an important German uh, uh, machine tool manufacturer by a larger Chinese corporation, Sani Corporation, uh, for about 550 million euros. And uh, there are more to follow because the Chinese want European technology, they want European brands, they want an entrance to, Europe, to the European market and, to the, and also to European management know-how and distribution and marketing know-how and also particular branding know-how. So I think uh, the sources of foreign direct investment will change if you want them to come in. Uh, but uh, from, from the Western world, I wouldn't expect much uh, for indirect investment uh, for the next years. 
because essentially this scenario has uh, or will not have improved until, uh, I would say, 2020. Where are companies really investing in Europe now? I think a, a lot of the local investment is uh, still going into infrastructure, also because uh, um, infrastructure is uh, a very job-intensive uh, uh, business and uh, what we need in Europe is economic growth but also economic growth which goes together with uh, job creation. This is one of the areas. Of course most of the, industry, uh, of the investment will go into technological innovation because this is where the future of uh, the European economy will be and again if we come back to uh, foreign direct investment coming from emerging markets, uh, these markets want access to technology, to patents, to uh, European research, uh, not so much to our markets. How strong economically do you see Europe in, say, the next five years? No, I think uh, Europe is facing a consolidation period because we have to reduce sovereign debt, we have to stabilize uh, the euro, our common currency, and this requires less expenditure and less expenditure means a lower growth. So I think we will have uh, the famous uh, seven meager years in front of us, uh, as the Bible says, but I think uh, the great opportunity for Europe is after these seven years, which might be five at the end, we will have a much stronger, much more united and uh, also much more politically stronger Europe. You want to set up a European credit rating agency. Why is that? Well, first of all, um, we, which is the Rollenberger Strategy Consultants, do not want to set up anything because we are, we are not in the rating business nor in any other business. We are management consultants and we have to be independent and objective and uh, uh, so we don't have any business interest. Uh, as an intellectual um, contribution to the debate of this rating situation worldwide and of uh, the oligopoly or the monopoly of the three American rating agencies, uh, there was a political debate whether uh, the competition in the rating agency market should be more intense and we agreed to this, first of all. Secondly, we developed a business model, an evaluation model, which, was, which is different from uh, the model practiced by the American rating agencies. Plus, uh, it avoids uh, the necessary conflict of interest if you rate uh, a product uh, and are paid by the manufacturer. Our proposal was a different uh, business model where uh, the customer essentially pays for the rating because he has an interest in an objective judgment. So uh, I think uh, the model is good, it has a future, uh, it got political and, and support by the investment community, but whether it's ever realized it's not in our hands. Well how would this differ from the Bertelsmann model? Now the Bertelsmann uh, uh, idea, which is also a very good one, uh, is, is much more limited in scope. Uh, they have only uh, the scope of uh, rating countries and that's a totally different, uh, first of all, scope of business. Secondly, it's a different methodology. Um, so uh, I think it's, it's an aliot and not uh, competing with the model Ron Berger have uh, developed in the past one or two years. Do you believe that the euro is overvalued or undervalued compared to other uh, global currencies? In theory, uh, uh, economists say that the, the um, purchasing parity value of the euro vis-a-vis -vis the dollar would be more or less around 120. Now it, it, it rates about 129 and 128, 132, so one can say it's a little bit overvalued, but I think uh, the valuation is more or less correct at the moment. It used to be overvalued um, about uh, one, one and a half years ago, but with the euro crisis, uh, the valuation came down and it might come down even further. How do you believe German managers are performing now? No, I would say uh, in particular the last four or five years have 
proof that the German managers and German enterprises are doing extremely well. I think German managers are very international, they are very innovative, they know how to uh, deal with people issues, which is, I think, the most important issue nowadays. They are very much uh, customer focused uh, and uh, service focused. They are a pretty good mix between strategic thinking and operational competence, uh, which is not the case in, in other countries. You find excellent strategists and poor operational performers or vice versa. I think um, I would judge uh, the present generation of German management uh, very uh, highly and give them very high grades. As a German consultant, you've built up sort of a global empire advising businesses and companies on how best to perform. Where does most of your success really come from? I think, first of all, uh, I always had a very, very clear intention to create value for my clients. And evidently, this has happened. Otherwise, there wouldn't be uh, still my clients or our clients and our and Rollenberger Strategy Consultants uh, wouldn't have been as successful as it was growing and being among the five uh, top uh, strategy consultancies worldwide. Secondly, I think simply hard work. Um, thirdly, maybe I personally am a good analyst and at the same way, uh, at the same time, I am also relatively creative and, and also always good for a new, crazy, innovative idea. And thirdly, I've shown as, a, as an entrepreneur to be capable not only to invent things, but also to implement things and make things happen. Uh, this, of course, has created over time trust uh, of our clients vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Romberger Strategy Consultants, uh, myself and my partners. And this has helped to develop uh, the firm uh, uh, to the status where we are now, now, but we are still very ambitious and uh, believe in a great future of the, the Roland Berger Strategy Consultants for the next decade. You need courage. Of course. <laughs> I think courage is courage and, and, and you, have to, yeah, you, you have to have the strong will to, to take a risk and to win and to overcome the risk. So um, I think, uh, um, of course, I'm, I'm a constant learner. Well, my, my, my experience, my professional experience as a management consultant essentially is lifelong learning. This is what makes me tick uh, and, and, of course, see a positive impact which one can have not only directly on our enterprise clients but also on the societies we are working in. Have you changed your business model much in reaction to the financial crisis? Not really. As usually, if uh, situations, economic situations become more difficult, uh, the restructuring part of our business and uh, the cost-saving part of our business uh, gets uh, a major share. And after the crisis, the strategic part of the uh, consulting business becomes uh, more important. But this is uh, a changing of uh, content, the relative content of our work, but not so much about the business model in itself. The business model is still uh, to create value for our clients and to get paid on uh, time fee or project fee basis and not on success fee basis because I think success fee basis uh, essentially are against the object objectivity which uh, is required from a consultant. You actively support education and have numerous projects underway. Why is that? I think, first of all, uh, investments in education are investments uh, into the future. And I'm a very future-oriented person. Secondly, I think uh, many uh, things in our education system uh, can be improved. For instance, in Germany, we have the situation that about 80% of uh, the children of academics uh, are also um, uh, studying and, and having a, a university education, while less than 20% of uh, for, uh, workers' families um, have the opportunity to, to achieve a university grade. Uh, so 
I think it is important to change uh, these uh, social injustices also because they are a waste of talent and a waste of uh, human resources which cannot be in the interest of our society and of the particular of the future of our society also in view of the demographic change, changes we are uh, facing which essentially means decreasing population uh, with a high average age. Uh, so you, uh, knowledge is the only base uh, which can uh, make sure that our society works as well as our economy continues to be able to feed uh, our people. Roland Berger, we thank you very much for joining NC of Knowledge. Thank you very much. My pleasure.